Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel and I'm now doing question number eight from the Pure Mathematics P2 International A-Level June October 2020 paper. And this question here is about geometric series and <clears throat> here we're told that a geometric series has a first term A and a common ratio R and we have to prove that the sum of the first n terms of this series is given by this formula. Now this is one of the proofs that we're supposed to know even though they give the formula in the formula book we're supposed to know how to prove this formula. Now, to prove this formula, what we do is we write down the sum of a geometric series, write down the first few terms, like the first term is A. A geometric series is such that you have to keep multiplying by the same number each time to get to the next term, and that number is called the common ratio, R. So the second term will be A times R. And the third term will be a times r times r, which is a times r squared, and so on, a times r cubed. And you keep going until you get to the last number, which is a times r to the power of n minus 1. That's the last term of the series. As you can see, uh, the first term is a to the power of, um, just a to the power of r to the power, a times r to the power of 0, basically. The second term is a times r to the power of 1. The third term is a times r squared. The fourth term is a times r cubed. So the nth term is going to be a times r to the power of n minus 1. That's the nth term. And we want to find the sum of the first n terms. So the term before the last term, which is the n minus 1th term, will be a to the power of n minus 2. Okay, as you can see from this pattern here. And so on. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the sum again, but this time I'm going to multiply each term by r. So I'll have r times sn equal so instead of writing r i'm going to write a instead of writing a i'll have a times r and instead of writing a times r I'll write a times r squared and then i'll write a times r cubed and a times r to the power of four and here i'll have plus a times r to the power of n minus one and the last term will be a times r to the power of n okay so because every term you've multiplied by Basically, um, this will be the fifth term, a times r to the power of 4 here, and so on. So basically, every term you've multiplied it by r. So this second line here will be multiplied by r. So these powers that were in this place are now going to be increased by 1. What you'll notice now is if I take this as line 1 and line 2, equation 1 and equation 2. Okay, so this is... What I can do is... If I subtract these two lines from each other, if I subtract them, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have Sn minus the sum of the first n terms minus R times the sum of the first n terms is equal to, if I subtract these lines, if I do line 1 minus line 2, okay, and I'll write that here, line 1 minus line 2, what I'm going to have is the AR minus AR will disappear. AR squared minus AR squared that will cancel out. AR cubed minus AR cubed will cancel out. AR to the power 4 minus AR to the power 4 cancel out. AR to the power 5 minus AR to the power 5 cancel out. All the way until we get to here, you'll have uh, over here, you'll have ARN minus, uh, this is going to be ARN minus 2 will cancel out with this. They will cancel out. And ARN minus 1 will cancel out. So when you subtract them, you get 0. And you're left with minus AR to the power of N. So the only terms left are the A and the a r to the power of n. Everything else, when you subtract, will cancel out. So you're left with a minus a times r to the power of n. Now if I simplify this, if I simplify this, let me uh, take out the common factor of s n on this side. So I have s n 1 minus r, and on this side the common factor is a, so I have a times 1 minus r to the power of n, and if I divide both sides by 1 minus r, I'm left with a times 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. And there we have our formula. Okay, so we've proved it. a times 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. So that's a proof that you should know. You should know that proof. Okay, it's important for you to know that proof there. Okay, so let me just move this here. Okay, it's important for you to know that proof. Very important. Okay, so you write down the sum of the first n terms like in this basic form a first term plus a r plus a r squared plus a r cubed and so on and then plus put a few dot dot dots and then you have 
a r to the power of n minus one, which is the nth term, and write a couple before it, and then you take the same terms from that you wrote before, but just multiply everything by r. So all the terms are, you know, the r in power increases by one, and then you subtract those two lines, and you're left with just the a because there's no a's left in the second line, and a r to the power of n because there's no a r to the power of n's in the, the first line so when you subtract them you get a minus a r to the power of n and on this side you have sn minus rsn and then you can just factorize out the common terms and then you can simplify to give sn as a subject and there you have that's the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series so that's part a done now for part b part b tells us that the second term of a geometric series is minus 320 now the first the nth term of a geometric series is given by a times r to the power of n minus 1. They told us that the second term is minus 320, and they told us that the fifth term is 512 over 25. So if the second term is 320, that means that um, a times r to the power of 1 is equal to minus 320. And if the fifth term is 512 over 25 that means a r to the power of 4 is equal to 512 divided by 25 and I want to find the common ratio so I'll call this equation 1 and equation 2 now very you can use some sort of substitution and it'll work fine if you do that there's no problem but a very nice simple way of dealing with this type of question is if you take equation 2 and divide it by equation 1 you end up with a r to the power of 4 over a r the a's cancel leaving you with r cubed and you're left with 512 over 25 divided by minus 320. Okay, so what does that give us? Okay, that gives us, let's see, 512, whoops, 12, divided by 25, over 25, divided by 320, minus 320, and it gives us minus 8 over 25. So r cubed equals minus 8 over 125. Therefore, r is equal to the cube root of negative 8 over 125, which is equal to negative 2 over 5. Whoops. 2 over 5. Negative 2 over 5. So we can say r is equal to minus 2 fifths. That's a common ratio for this series. Okay, that's part b. Now for part c. It says, hence find the sum of the first 13 terms of the series. So we know Sn equals A times 1 minus R to the power of N over 1 minus R. There's also another formula which is uh, similar, which is A times R to the power of N minus 1 over, 1 minus, over R minus 1, sorry. And that will give you the same answer as this, but normally we use this one when we have R. We have the magnitude of R is less than 1. This is better to use this form just makes your calculations easier so we want to find the sum of the first 13 terms so we want to find we know that the number of terms is 13 uh, we know the common ratio is minus two fifths we need to find what a is the first term well we know that a times r equals as they told us in the beginning minus 320 and we've worked out that r is minus two fifths so you have a times minus two fifths equals minus 320 so a is going to be um, minus 320 divided by um, minus 2 and times 5. Multiply by 5, divide by minus 2. So that's going to be 160 times 5. I think that's 800. Let's just make sure. So you're going to have 320 divided by 2 times 5. It's going to give me 800 positive because negative divided by negative positive. So we know now we now know that a is equal to 800. Okay, so we can now work out the sum of the first 13 terms is going to be 800 times 1 minus you're going to have minus 2 fifths to the power of 13. Okay, divided by 1 minus minus 2 fifths. Okay, so let's just stick that in our calculator and get the answer uh, to two decimal places. So we're going to have 800 um, times 1 minus um, minus 2 fifths to the power of 13.
close that bracket. That's correct. Divided by 1 minus minus 2 fifths, which is 1 plus 2 fifths, which is going to be 1 plus 2 fifths, 7 over 5, but anyway, I'll just write it like this, 2 fifths. Okay, that's going to give me my answer, which is 571.4324. 571.4324, which we should write to two decimal places as 571.43. And there's the answer to this question. Okay, so that there we have the complete question. I think that was it for this question. Yes, it was. So that's question number eight from this paper of June, October 2020. Other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist over here. Other questions to do with series and sequences in this playlist over here. And um, here you can find links, uh, link to subscribe to my channel if you wish to do so. And on the top of the page, you can find a card, you'll find a card which will take you to another P2 paper. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon.